One of the best narrative-based adventure games has just landed on iPhone, iPad, and Apple M1-based Macs. What remains of Edith Finch? It was developed by Giant Sparrow, the team behind the first-person painting game The Unfinished Swan, and published to the App Store by the great Annapurna Interactive. Giant Sparrow have given me an insight into the iOS version, and I've analysed how it performs on a range of devices. What Remains of Edith Finch is compatible with the following devices on initial launch. Pause the video now to see if your device is listed. What Remains of Edith Finch was originally brought to console and PC in mid-2017. It became overwhelmingly successful with its unique way of storytelling with a collection of strange tales about a family in Washington State. It was also praised for its wonderful visuals with lots of intricate details and constantly changing scenes and scenery. The game was available on most platforms out there and many wondered if a mobile version was in the works. Our questions were answered with the iOS announcement at the Annapurna Interactive Showcase in late July. Giant Sparrow told me the iOS version of What Remains of Edith Finch has been in development for almost a year. That is a very short time frame for a game of this visual caliber. What Remains of Edith Finch is another good example of a console and PC game running on mobile. While it isn't as demanding as Definity Original Sin 2, nor is it a next-gen title, and it doesn't offer the big budget gameplay of some AAA games out there, it is still one of the most visually impressive games we've seen on mobile, with some seriously advanced visual effects going on screen. Giant Sparrow told me a major focus of development was in keeping the look and rendering quality as true to the original release as possible, despite the more limited mobile hardware. The types of effects and materials shaders used vary from story to story, but some common features are Deferred lighting with a combination of baked and real-time lighting Screen space reflections and cube map reflections composited into a reflection environment Screen space ambient occlusion Real-time cascaded shadow mapping Post-process bloom Filmic tone mapping and color grading Motion blur Depth of field Vignette And chromatic aberration All iOS versions of What Remains of Edith Finch were developed with a customized version of Unreal Engine 4 and support the Metal Framework version 2.1. iCloud saves are supported with the iPhone, iPad and Apple M1 version. That's right, the iOS version is also available on M1 Macs via the Mac App Store. If you don't know, when developers publish their games to the App Store, they can choose to make their apps available on M1 based Macs with Xcode 12 or later. Keep in mind, this isn't the desktop version of the game. It's the iPad version with a 4x3 aspect ratio. It works okay thanks to having controller support. Yes, the game works with all compatible controllers on iPhone, iPad and Apple M1. I'm just a little disappointed that there is no rumble support as this was one of the key features of playing the game on console. Please bring it. Keyboards and mouse are supported too on iPad and the M1 version. However, they are currently not very well optimized, especially mouse support. I have told Giant Sparrow about this, so hopefully they are able to improve it. And the game has Pretty good touchscreen controls. Use your left finger to move, use your right finger to look around, and when you need to interact with something in the scene, an icon will appear that you simply tap on. I was scared that the touchscreen controls would not work well for some scenes. Take Lewis's story, where you have to interact with two scenes at once. 
It's a brilliant scene. It works two sides of your mind. I found it was easier to actually play this with the touchscreen controls than when using a controller. Just like the PS4 and Xbox One versions, what remains of Edith Finch targets 30 FPS on all iOS devices. On PS4 and Xbox One consoles, the frame rate would sometimes drop a bit below 30, especially on baseline models during the opening sequence as you approach the Finch house. This is not the same case here as most iOS devices are able to maintain 30 FPS. Devices with an A10 Fusion chip get the worst performance, such as our iPad 6th generation, only occasionally dropping to the low 20s. But honestly, I'm really surprised that the game is even working on these devices. Giant Sparrow told me the frame rate is 30 FPS for all devices to balance thermals and battery usage, as this is how the game was originally designed and, in our opinion, doesn't benefit from a higher refresh rate. I happen to agree with Giant Sparrow. It's just held back a little with issues with frame pacing. This is one area that Giant Sparrow need to look at, as it's quite noticeable. There is, however, one part of the game where the frame rate can go up to 45 FPS on some devices. This is during the thought-provoking and hauntingly beautiful story of Calvin on the swing set. The slightly higher FPS is to work around a stability issue with physics as you swing up and down. What remains of Edith Finch on iOS is said to use a few different rendering resolutions internally in order to composite various effects, the in-world text and UI, as well as dynamic resolution for the G buffer to accommodate more performance intensive areas and devices thermal and battery conditions. Pause the video now to see what resolution the game runs on some of our Apple devices. The graphics quality options are fixed on iOS devices. Settings have been tuned specifically for each device to try to achieve the best balance of performance and quality. For devices with a weak graphics chip, such as our iPad 6th gen, it sadly looks terrible and you can barely read the text. I think Giant Sparrow should have not allowed the game to be played on devices with an A10 Fusion chip, as it's just not a pleasant experience. Are you going to buy what remains of Edith Finch on your iPhone, iPad, or Apple M1 based Mac? What do you think of the port? Are you impressed or disappointed? Let me know what you think in the comments. I really hope they update this game with controller rumble support, as I said, but I hope they also bring an Apple TV version and a native Mac version in the future with universal support between iOS devices. That would make me super happy. Anyway, leave a like to show your support and subscribe and turn on notifications to stay up to date with everything Apple gaming related. My name's Dewey and thanks for watching.